We watched them take you away. We listened to a crowd curse you and watched as they killed you. And we stood in front of you as you breathed your last. The spear went into your side and they cheered while you died. But death could not defeat you. Sin could not shatter you. Hate could not put you to waste. Your love cannot be erased. Our world sat in silence and shock as you counted to three before returning. But like you said, you are the resurrection and the life. Out of the darkness came the light, Christ. You came to give us new life. And when we thought all hope had been lost, the stone was rolled away. From dead to alive, our savior has once again arrived. There is magic in this mystery. You rose for us, inviting us to a life of trust, faith made personal. It's personal. You came to take our shame and pain, returned to reign, replaced our sin and stain with peace and grace. Redeemed by the Redeemer, you died in our place. Your resurrection redefined love, moving us to keep our eyes on who is above. And now we sing Alleluia. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hope doesn't let the story end. Christ has risen from the dead. Resurrected Jesus, our glory. You forever changed our story. Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever online Easter experience. Today is an extra special day. Yes, today we celebrate the fact that death couldn't defeat Jesus. He died on the cross and three days later, he rose from the grave. It might sound like one of those unreal clickbait articles, but this is no fake news. It's a true story and Jesus is the real deal. This Easter, we're getting personal. So personal that I'm challenging you right now to invite your friends and family to join you for worship. Just share the link or shoot them a quick text and tell them to tune in. Also, jump into the live chat. Say hi. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Yeah, and it's the perfect day to tune in too because we're wrapping up Compassion Week today by giving away $250 to a local charity in one lucky winner's name. That is so awesome. All you have to do to enter to win is text the number on the screen now. Easy peasy. Okay, and one more thing. Here's what you can expect today. First up is our incredibly creative kids ministry joining us for a segment we call Hey You Kids. After that, we have a short message from Pastor Greg and a song from our worship team. Sounds fun. Let's go. Oh, hey kids. I'm just checking out the headlines on the interwebs. Let's see what's going on today. Find some sweet headlines. Oh, here's one. Three-headed goat learns to read? <laughs> no way! I mean, I could see like a three-headed goat eating an entire village, but learning to read? Sorry. Let's find another headline. Ship made entirely of recycled socks sets sail. First off, recycled socks? No, thank you. And I don't know about you, but my socks always get wet and the water goes right through them. So. I could see maybe a uh, ship made of recycled socks sinking to the bottom of the ocean in a very stinky fashion, but not set setting sail. Let's find a third headline. Entire school of kids choose broccoli over pizza? Are you kidding me? How absurd. Unless this broccoli is made of candy or covered in chocolate, pizza wins every time. I mean. I can't believe these headlines one bit. Let's try something. I'm gonna ask you a question. If the answer is yes, go ahead and raise your hand. Has anyone ever lied to you? If so, go ahead and raise your hand. Have you ever lied to someone else? If so, raise your hand. Has anyone ever told you something that you just couldn't hardly believe because it seemed unbelievable? If so, raise your hand. Actually, now that I come to think of it, Professor T shows me experiments all the time that I find unbelievable. Let's see what she has in store for us today. 
<laughs> well, hi, Mr. B. Professor T, you're never gonna believe these headlines I ran into today. Let me see. Okay, this first one, it says, three-headed goat <laughs> learns to read? What? I know. That's crazy. Super crazy. Okay, here's another one. It said, ship made entirely of recycled socks set sail. No. All aboard. <laughs> no. And there's a third one that said, entire school of kids choose broccoli over pizza? What? Yeah. That one I don't believe. No, I don't believe any of them, Professor T. It's it's so hard to know what to believe, Mr. B. That's exactly what I was telling the kids. From now on, I'm taking a stand. If something seems unbelievable, I'll never believe it. Never again. You know, that reminds me of something. Here, put these gloves on. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to show you something. All right. Okay. Let's... I got these. Sure. Just give okay. me a little bit of time. We don't have all day, Mr. B. <laughs> Wrap it up a little. <laughs> Told you I'd get it for oh, Mr. B. You're, you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. What would you say if I told you that there were magic bubbles? Magic bubbles? Yes. That's less believable than an entire school of kids eating broccoli over pizza. Well, watch this. Watch what, Professor T? I'm gonna give you some magic bubbles. What? Look at those. What in the world is going on here? Whoa! Professor I think T. you could even catch one. You ready? Put I your can hands catch it. Is that what these yes. magic gloves are for? Whoa. Oh! I can do it. I did it! I caught a bubble! Mama, I made it! I'm catching magic bubbles! It's unbelievable! Once again, Professor T, you show me something that seems unbelievable. You know what? It's hard to know what to believe. And yeah. some people, they don't even believe that Jesus died and rose again. In fact, even one of his own disciples didn't believe that Jesus had rose again. You're talking about Thomas, aren't you? I am. But we got to give Thomas some slack here. I mean, Thomas saw Jesus die. How could he believe that he rose from the dead? That's true. Thomas, like you said, if it seems unbelievable, I'm out. I'm not going to believe it. Right. Yeah. In fact, you know what I think will help you out? What's that? Some kids made a video. I think we all need to watch it. Let's check it out. Let me catch you all up to speed here. Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples, where he said that one of them would betray him. Later at the garden, Judas was the one who betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He was put on trial and wrongfully convicted. They placed a crown of thorns on his head and made him carry his own cross to Golgotha, where he died for you and for me. His body was sealed in the tomb. And now we'll let the kids take it from here. After Jesus died, some of his friends laid his body in a big tomb. Yeah, Nicodemus, I finished wrapping my Lord. Good job, Joseph. Now I can finally set down my ancient Greek equivalent of 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe. Ugh, that's better. Hey, Nicodemus, could you help me roll this stone into place? Uh, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soldiers guarded it, the two. In fact, they're all night guarding it. Pilate told us to be here, so we're here because we obey his command. Three days later, the earth shook. Then the angels came down. An angel comes and rolls away the tomb. <coughs> and took Jesus' body out. And he took the linen cloth that he had been wearing and folded it. Babies come to the tomb with spices. How shall I move the boulder to put the spices on Jesus? I don't know. Oh my gosh, the boulder is gone. Huh? And so is Jesus' body. Oh no, what has happened? I am the angel of God. Jesus is not here anymore. He has risen, tell the others. Go tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is alive. <laughs> Woman, why are you crying? The tomb was empty. They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. Jesus shows himself to Mary. And Jesus said, look, it's me. I have holes in my hands and holes in my feet. Is it really you? Yes, it's me, Jesus. 
I have risen, but do not be afraid. Your sins are forgiven. Amazing. Yay. Jesus smiled and, and said, go tell the others that I will see them in Galilee. So Mary ran in to tell the disciples. Jesus, who is truly God, came down from heaven to be truly human for us. He lived, died, and rose from the dead. Through his death and resurrection, we are forgiven forever and are given the gift of eternal life through him. These kids believe it, and we hope you do too. Mr. B, are you okay? Oh, oh sorry. I, mean, I was just so caught up. The way that those kids and families told us about our risen Lord and Savior Jesus, it was just so thoughtful and so fun and a reminder that God truly loves us so much to do the unbelievable. That's true, Mr. B. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that aren't real. Yeah, like all those stories that were on my phone earlier. <laughs> exactly. But there is something and someone that is real. Jesus really did die on the cross for us and he rose again to forgive us of all of our sins. You know, that is one unbelievable thing that I can truly believe in. Wow, wait a minute. You mean you're a believer, Mr. B? I'm a believer. That's incredible, That's right. but now what? Well, now we can't keep this to ourselves. And I've got a way that our families can share this amazing story of Jesus' unbelievable love for us with people in their own neighborhoods. It's Easter, and you may have already done an Easter egg hunt. Pretty fun, right? I mean, you go out, you look for those little plastic eggs, you open them up, and then you devour whatever goodies are inside. I love a good Easter egg hunt. But what if we brought the Easter egg hunt to our community? Uh, let me explain this to you. So what if we were the ones hiding the eggs? What if we were the ones filling them with goodies and toys? What if we were the ones to also fill those eggs with the message of Jesus and his love for them? Whoa. Then we could bring it and, and find people we know and go to their homes and hide the eggs in their yard so that they can read about this good news as well. You know, Easter is, is something that we shouldn't just celebrate one day. It's something that we should celebrate for weeks and, and all year long. So here's the challenge for you and your family. It's huge, but you can do it if you work together. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to click on this link and it's got all these wonderful messages. You're going to print off those messages, cut them out, and then you're going to put those little messages of Jesus and his love for you in the eggs, along with the toys and the goodies, of course. Now, this is where it gets a little bit ninja sneaky. You're going to get in the vehicle as a family with those eggs that you've already prepared. You're gonna drive over to your friend's house and sneakily stop. and tiptoe around their yard and barrel <laughs> and hide those eggs wherever you want to hide them, maybe in bushes behind a tree, under a window, hide those eggs, but make sure you know how many you hid. Then on a piece of paper, you're going to leave a note saying how many Easter eggs are hidden in their yard. You're going to hide that note in their door or on the porch. You're gonna ring the doorbell, ding dong, and get out of there. Get back to the car. Drive away, and they're gonna find that note. And it's gonna say, you've got 10 or 15 or I don't know how many eggs you're gonna hide, 25 eggs hidden in your yard. They'll find those eggs, they'll open them up, they'll find the toys, they'll find the goodies, and most importantly, they'll find those messages that remind them and tell them that Jesus rose for them. The unbelievable becomes believable for them. And we all get to have eternal life because of what Jesus done for us. How awesome. This is your challenge. You can do it. Go out there and let's share the love of Jesus. What? Look at that, Mr. B. What? It's alive! giant bubble! And it's rising just like Jesus on Easter! Exactly! You know what? 
this bubble that is unbelievable is another reminder just like Jesus who unbelievably rose from the dead for us to wipe away our sins forever. Amazing. Happy Easter. Bye. Happy Easter. I'm so excited to be gathered with you today here at King of Kings to share about Easter. You know, this Easter, I want us to think about how much Easter, our faith, Jesus, is personal. And it is personal. You know, and it's personal because, well, really, it's all about how we look and see and have come to know Jesus. Some were born into a faith family where you grew up living and breathing and talking about Jesus. Others grew up maybe in a faith family where Jesus was talked about, was maybe shared, but faith and life was kind of ambivalent. And then some have grown up with no faith, a non-faith family. And you know, as we think about that, we think about what does Jesus really want? And here's what he wants. He wants you and me and the entire world to see and to know him. You know, I remember when I was a kid and we grew up in the faith, but I remember as a kid just taking some time and kind of searching and saying, is Jesus real? I, I honestly, as a kid, wasn't sure. I mean, my parents had talked to me about Jesus. We had gone to church every weekend for the most part. But there's a time and a point in everybody's life where you have to ask the question, is Jesus real? You know, I want to tell about a story in the scriptures that share about a disciple who asked the same question. Matter of fact, he asked it in a very different way. His name is Thomas. Maybe you've heard of him. It's called the Doubting Thomas. Maybe you've heard that phrase. But here's the reality. Jesus had risen from the dead. The tomb was empty. He had appeared to the women, and he had appeared to a few of the disciples. And when they told the story that Jesus had appeared and Jesus was alive... Thomas said, Nah, I will not believe this unless I see him and place my hands in his side, place my fingers in the holes of his hands, I will not believe. Thomas was an ardent opponent of the resurrection, the Easter message, and the Easter story. He would only believe if he had seen. You know, when I think about Thomas, I think about the reality that God wants every one of us to believe and to know him. And just like when Thomas said, I will not believe unless I see, I think there are times where you and I in our lives, for me it happened when I was a teenager, where you and I in our lives kind of walk down the road and say, God, are you real? Jesus, are you real? Give me a sign if you're real. You know, a lot of times this happens in a crisis moment. I know this past year, many of us have had crises moments where we've asked, Jesus, are you real? Jesus, do you have control over everything else around us that seemingly is spinning out of control? I think that we have these crisis moments in job loss, crisis moments in the illness, the sickness of a parent, of a spouse, the crisis moments in the loss of a child. Yes, every one of us at some point in time will walk through a valley and when we walk through the valley, that is a crisis of conscience, a crisis of faith. And we have to ask ourselves the question, 
Jesus, are you real? And look for the sign that God is giving. I had the opportunity to interview John Gordon. John Gordon was a person who grew up outside of the faith and now today is a Christian. Maybe you've heard of John Gordon, maybe you haven't, but I want you to hear his story of when Jesus showed up to him. The pain, the burden, the fear, the negativity, my life falling apart, losing my job, it really made me seek God. And during that time, God started to, to speak to me in, in really some, some cool ways. But it was like, God, why am I here? What is my purpose? And writing and speaking came to me one day. Like, that's what I was here to do. And so God was speaking to me. I surrendered to God. God, I can't do it alone. I need you, God. Please help me. I call that my, my first covenant where I was now surrendering to God, the, the God of Abraham, right? And so I was surrendering to him. And then I listened to a sermon from a pastor named Erwin McManus. A good friend of mine gave me this sermon by him, and it was called Why I Follow Jesus. And I listened to that sermon, and for the first time, I heard the voice of Jesus. For the first time, he spoke to me. And I remember saying, maybe there is something to this Jesus. I'm open. And I was now open to the possibility of who he said he was. And I said, okay, God, if he is who he said he was, show me the signs. I am open to those signs. And I started to see the signs everywhere. Street signs, big billboard signs. I started to see real signs. I was driving down to Orlando. I was going to give a talk. I was not a Christian. And I'm looking to the left as I'm driving down the road. And I heard, look, and I turn to the right. And there's a huge sign that says, Jesus is the answer. Wow. When I think about John sharing his story and the reminder that we are to have our eyes open, what are the signs that God is giving to you saying he is real? Because they're there. Just like when Thomas showed, when Thomas said, I need a sign, and Jesus showed up and said, place your hands in the holes in my hand. Place your hand up into my side and feel around that I am real and I am alive. God has given you signs as well. Maybe it's a billboard that says Jesus is real. Maybe it's through someone who isn't even a Jesus follower, but is leading you to see Jesus. Because the signs are there. And so today on Easter, I want you to open your eyes. I want you to ask God and say, God, show up. Where are you? And maybe if you're a believer, you're saying, well, I still want to see he is showing up. Thomas, this great apostle, traveled to a country that we know today called India. And it was about 50 AD when he was there. And I asked a friend of mine who is a, a pastor in India, I asked him to share with me one of the miracle stories of Thomas in India. And Thomas was out one day in 50 AD and there were a bunch of fishermen, and he started to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, and they didn't want to hear it anymore. They didn't want to hear anymore about the resurrection of Jesus because they were Hindus, and they walked away. And so Thomas kept sharing the good news of Jesus to the water. And do you know what happened? Thousands of fish came and popped their heads up and we were listening to the gospel proclamation. And do you know what the fishermen did when they saw the thousands of fish? They ran back to Thomas to catch all the fish. And as they saw the sign of Jesus and heard the good news through the apostle Thomas, that day thousands of Hindu fishermen became thousands of fishers of men, Christians, in this great nation of India. You see, I want you to believe and to be open to the signs of Jesus. They're there. He is showing up to you every day. We just have to have our eyes open. And so I want to challenge you. If you're not a believer, I want to invite you right now. Maybe you're not a Jesus follower, but I want to invite you right now 
to say, God, are you real? Show me and just have your eyes open. Be ready to hear the good news because it is that good news that will bring you everlasting and eternal life. Maybe you are a Jesus follower and maybe you're on the fringe. Maybe it doesn't feel real to you all the time. I want to invite you to examine the reality that if Jesus is real and the tomb is empty and you believe it, how has that news transformed and changed your life? And maybe you're an everyday Jesus follower and you know it, but I guess I would ask you, are you spiritually living it? Are you living out the passion and the love? Is your worship spirit-filled, hands-raised, mountaintop experiences? Do you see the great joy that you can have every single day because you are a person of Jesus? And more importantly, do others see Jesus within you? This Easter, Jesus showed up in the life of Thomas. And this Easter, the promise is that Jesus is showing up in your life today. The Easter victory, the Easter appearance, is not just something that happened over 2,000 years ago. It's something that happens every day in everyone's life. Just open our eyes and see Jesus in your midst. Happy Easter. Again, if you would like to make a next step in your commitment to a journey of faith, to finding out more about this Jesus, the screens are showing ways for you to do that right now. Take that step and know you're not taking it alone. Jesus is right there with you.
so good. Such an awesome reminder that impossible has never stopped God. Thanks so much, worship team. If this is your first time joining us for worship, welcome. We're so glad that you're here and we'd love to connect with you. Follow the info on the screen, and if you're a first-timer, we're gonna send you a free gift in the mail too. No strings attached. Hey, we'd also love to know if there's a way to pray for you. You can do that in the live chat, and our team will pray with you now, or text the number on the screen to share with us how we can pray for you and support you in your next steps of faith. If you've been worshiping with us for a while, now is the time to partner to support the ministry. Here are some easy ways that you can do that. You can give online or give via text. Ah, and don't forget to text the number on the screen for a chance to win that $250 to be donated in your name to your local charity. Oh, that's it for this week. I hope you can join us again next week as we start a brand new series called Explore God. We're gonna be unpacking some of life's biggest questions. Let's take a sneak peek at what to expect. Life is a journey. With all its ups and downs, there are so many questions along the way. That's why we're starting a new series called Explore God, where we'll look at common and significant questions about God and faith. Questions like, what's your purpose? Is the Bible reliable? Are science and faith incompatible? Is Christianity part of the problem? Why would God allow pain and suffering? Is there only one way to heaven? How can I know God personally? So join us beginning Sunday, April 11th for our new series, Explore God. Good. Be sure and set a reminder to tune in same time, same place. Have a happy Easter, everyone. Bye. Bye.